Hello, hello everyone. Uh, we hope all of you are safe and sound wherever you are. We live in strange times and uh, it's um, great to see so many fellow professionals attending the event digitally, despite the social challenges. We're very excited to be part of this year's Security Summit. And of course, a great and um, warm thank you to the organizers and to all who have taken interest in our topic using the IoT to make a building smart and secure the why, the why, the what, and the how. My name is Koyan Vosilev, Partner Manager for Bosch IO. And today I am accompanied by my teammates, Rafael Lindenmayer and Miriam Klein. Together, we would like to present um, our thoughts on the potential future developments in the building segment. Rafa, Miriam, uh, would you like to share just a warm welcome to our participants? Sure. So from my side, also a uh, very warm welcome to everyone. Also a big thanks to the organizers, also to our colleagues from Bosch Building Technologies. Um, yeah, so my name is Raphael, Raphael Lindermeyer. I'm a senior sales manager um, selling IoT within the Bosch IO group um, with a focus on connected buildings. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and I hope we can present you a uh, very interesting stuff right now. <laughs> Maybe I give the word to my colleague Miriam. Yeah, yeah hello everyone. Also, just hi from my side. I'm Miriam Klein. Um, I'm working very closely with Karian and Raphael on uh, getting a building smart and connected. Today I will just support you um, by taking all your que questions via the chat. Uh, so whenever something comes up, feel free um, just to text us um, and we will uh, answer all your questions. Thanks, Karian. Back to you. Great. Thank you both. Uh, now, a couple of words about Bosch in general, maybe. Um, as all of you know, um, Bosch is, um, um, is one of the largest manufacturing uh, companies with a long tradition in producing power tools, household appliances, car components, and all kinds of microsensors, basically. Actually, we produce around roughly 4 million microsensors per day. So that being said, we apply all industry standards and best practices to ensure the highest quality and excellence of our work. Now, Bosch IO is a software business unit of Robert Bosch, specializing in smart and connected solutions. Our mission is to bring the IoT to life, and we leverage the power of big data and artificial intelligence to help businesses by increasing efficiency and uh, monetizing new revenue streams. Um, we try to keep a user and business-centric approach to really accelerate the adoption of IoT and transform siloed services into connected IoT ecosystems. Currently, we have successfully executed more than 300 large-scale international projects, connected nearly 15 million sensors and devices to our IoT platform, and are actively pushing the frontier of IoT adoption across different domains, so, um, smart agriculture, predictive maintenance for large industrial machines, energy grid optimization, smart buildings, etc. Now, moving the focus to buildings and uh, using IoT, to, to make them smart and secure. We need to take a, a three-step approach, in our opinion. First of all, um, we need to understand why our buildings getting more intelligent and the key drivers uh, for the strength. Secondly, what can we do in practice to, to address the changes in the sector? And lastly, how to do it, right? How do we put the technology into good use and create a living and breathing building. Right, so starting with the why as a, as a first point. First of all, um, it's a fact that the segment is expecting a substantial growth uh, from 60 billion in 2019 to 106 billion by 2024. That is still nearly 100% growth in just five years. What is causing this dramatic increase? Uh, we believe mainly IoT and telematics. Everything is being connected. As the data going in and coming out of devices is the central part for managing a building. Access control, video surveillance, building management systems, fire and evacuation algorithms. The operators of buildings are just getting flooded with all kinds of different information. 
Of course, such systems are essential in every building, but uh, think about how much complexity and effort it is to manage 10 different, 10 independent systems. How accurately and quickly can you make the best decision? Well, you're also focus, your focus is divided across 10 different problems. Unfortunately, the lack of um, coherence is a real challenge in buildings, and um, it's not really easy to overcome. Secondly, being eco-friendly. Now, Harvard University said that people work in well-ventilated offices with the low average levels of indoor pollutants and CO2 actually have significantly higher cognitive functioning scores. This is a fact. But companies are not only responsible for what is happening inside their building and therefore should adopt an outdoor focus as well. This is why buildings are equipped with sensors that monitor emissions, energy consumption, and overall environmental impact. Yet today, relatively few buildings use any form of real-time energy reporting and continue to rely on manual meter reading. Why? Why is that? IoT can provide access to real-time monitoring of electric, water, and gas meters with the help of distributed energy systems. So integrating such an approach to a smart building uh, basically enables you to reduce carbon emissions, predict future energy demand, and really increase energy efficiency while reducing your overall energy costs. And lastly, whether it's a healthcare, commercial, industrial, hotel, education, or any other building, facility managers are trying to keep expenses stagnant while providing the same or better level of service. So facility managers today have to do more with less, including the priority of life safety and, and security, while also meeting evolving user expectations. So it is a big challenge. All of this requires access to big and usable data. And therefore, the challenge to do more things with less money is tied to an organization's computer network. The goal is to operate and maintain a network so that it can continue working with as little downtime as possible. And we all know that downtimes can um, cost the business a lot of money and a lot of problems when they occur. So why do we need IoT going a step further? Well, one point we believe is um, that because it really helps with uh, proactive monitoring. Right, this is uh, the one of the essential parts, proactive monitoring and maintenance. So as mentioned, owners and managers are looking for added value in an effort to lower the cost of ownership and at the same time to generate healthy return on investment for all of their security solutions and system uptime. So they need to spend less time on diagnostics um, reduce operational costs as well, and have a clear and accurate strategy how to plan for the future. IoT can help with extracting and analyzing real-time data and using it to prioritize fact-based actions to navigate the current and future needs of a building. Secondly, most solutions nowadays are really you know, high-tech, data-centric, cutting-edge, market-leading, etc. But can they play together? We believe that standalone siloed solutions require really a sizable investment, complex onboarding timelines, and delegated personnel devoting efforts for supervision and operations. So imagine having 10 different vendors for 10 different separate systems. This might cause a lot of confusion and a lot of headaches. So therefore, a smart building requires a transparent, coherent, a, a multi-dimensional representation to help with the full spectrum of operational needs with detailed analytics and centralized operating portal. Next, uh, the data, cross-usage data. Of course, businesses no longer provide standalone products. Everything is coupled with an embedded software, web portals, and probably a mobile application to help you control different devices and machines. But the challenge here really lies in the transparency and standardization of data streams and processes. So the question really is, how can we put everything into a common 
an interoperable system. This is exactly why Bosch.io advocates an open approach for be being vendor independent. So we use the protocol of different devices to create their digital twins with all our respective parameters, configuration settings, and all kinds of features. So the navigation between devices and processes is no longer reliant on having a locked-in system by a single vendor. You can have one centralized platform, a holistic platform that transforms your building into a living and breathing organism. And finally, um, a flexible cloud strategy. The large amount of data and critical time for operations really require um, platforms which are cloud-based. This is a fact. Uh, this ensures the fast and simple execution of essential tasks, reduces the risks of downtimes, and it is cost-effective due to its pay-per-use nature. However, we know that not all businesses are created equally. Not all businesses are the same. So for those which have sensitive data, an on-premise installation is required to keep the data safe. This is also an option for us, as uh, we definitely understand the importance of data safety and security and control, and therefore can work with our um, partners to achieve uh, this goal. So we can be very, very flexible in, in such an approach. Now, this is pretty much our take on the recent uh, and future developments in the industry. And um, I'm going to hand over to Rafa, actually, who will put all of this uh, into a more applied perspective, let's say. Rafa, on to you. Thank you, Carlo. Jan. It was a great introduction, and I think um, I can move on with a more, um, I would say, down to earth, uh, down -to -earth um, example. So we came up with this uh, exemplary user journey. Yeah, so we have um, three colleagues or three people working on a high level security research lab. Uh, basically, we have three personas. So John as an employee, Trisha, who is the site manager, and Jack, who is a visitor working there as well. Uh, we all know uh, there is always um, the unknown playing a role in all of uh, in a lot of moments in our lives. So uh, what we want to show here quickly is uh, the unexpected effect of something happening where we didn't know about, right? So I start uh, working after lunchtime. So he, he uh, reaches the, the, the facilities and based on the information from sensors or from cameras, he can actually see uh, where there is, uh, whether there is a free spot to park his car. And he actually finds it and uses uh, an employee app to, to, well, quickly reach this information. Yeah? So he parks his car, uh, goes uh, with, I mean, into the facility. And um, as my colleague uh, said before, we are all living on COVID-19 uh, days. And uh, well, he just cannot sit anywhere he wants anymore. So he has to check for a desk availability, which is COVID-19 conform. So meaning social distancing, meaning that the, the tables were uh, clean before he, uh, he's there to reach it. But uh, well, he actually can do it uh, through the usage of sensors, through the usage of an intelligent system on the back end. He also uses his employee app to, to find him uh, and pick a seat for the day. A little bit later, so he's working at his uh, room and he finds out, uh, I mean, he's just looking at it and he finds a broken window. And uh, at his uh, uh, customer, they have the option of uh, reporting things uh, through a, an app so that um, the, the problem is, uh, well, very fastly, but also very organized. Um, picked up, yeah, so they know exactly where this broken window is. And uh, once he reports it, this information reaches uh, on, on real time, Trisha as a site manager. So of course this broken window can represent, for example, a security breach or just a, a, well, a problem in the building itself, but she gets this information. The system should be intelligent enough to really just give her the info, but um automatically forward uh, this this problem to a facility service provider which would go there and fix the window 
Um, a little bit later, so she's checking on the news and she gets an information from from the HR manager that the COVID-19, um, well, latest numbers, they are actually quite good. I mean, you see this effective world. <laughs> Um, and that at the moment, the new COVID occupancy statement, they do not have to be, say, 20% anymore. Yeah? Uh, so they can actually be a little bit higher, meaning more people could actually occupy the same room for now. So what she does, she goes quickly to um, a software that manages it, and she can uh, reset uh, this occupancy limit to, uh, to the current uh, availability. Yeah? Uh, based uh, on a few clicks. Yeah. So a little bit later at 4.30, she cycles back home. Nothing very strange happening there so far <laughs> until 8.25. So she gets an alert that there is an unauthorized presence on the hall five. And of course, again, uh, this information also goes directly to the security local team. Uh, which is already taking care of it, but she is a site manager. Of course, she wants to know about it and also, if needed, take her own actions on that. So now we come to, to Jack, uh, our visitor. So he's actually there to work uh, a little bit overnight uh, on a simulation with, with John, our, our first uh, exemplified person. And at 5.30, he arrives at the lab and she, he gets a wearable, um, I think about it as a smartwatch, which gives him the, all the information that he needs in order to, well, locate himself in the buildings, but also uh, any other kind of security or, inf well, I would say important things that he should know um, and guidelines and so on. Uh, he has it with them all the time. At 5.35, he, with the help of this wearable, he actually navigates to the room where John was sitting. Um, and based on, well, IoT and, and triangulations, they actually can quickly find John. Yeah? So a little bit later, um, we all know mistakes happen. And uh, once you have the human effect on, uh, or the human um, in place, there is always more potential for errors than usually on, on the IT side of things. Uh, so at 8.24, he, he goes to wash his hand, but the guy, for some crazy reason, he just took out his wearable and forgot to put it on again. At the moment, he uh, goes through this hall number five, and uh, well, the local security system or even the, the sensors which are measuring the presence in that room, in that hall, actually, um, see that there is someone there which should not be there because he doesn't have the doesn't have his wearable, right? And at that moment, the alarm goes off. Yeah? So people know that there is something wrong there. Uh, Trisha got the information, but also the local security team. And a few minutes later, he's guided back to the to the place. So the idea here is, was uh, to exemplify a little bit uh, how can IoT help on a, on a daily basis, uh, also from the security side of things. So you see here that we have three different personas. So how can we actually make um, these three people happy, I would say? Yeah, I mean, they have all different needs. Uh, Jack doesn't need to be informed, but he needs to have a good experience when he's visiting the, the site. Um, also, you see here a lot, of fire, a lot of systems running on background. So how can we make sure that all of this is connected, is also understanding each other so that the devices, it doesn't matter if it's a parking lot sensor or some other kind of uh, presence sensor, how can we make sure that they all uh, are connected and deliver value to the, to the users? So our take on that um, is that we offer actually customized IoT projects um, for different, uh, I would say, device manufacturers. So we're talking about cameras of uh, sen sensors or smart luminaries. So any kind of, uh, well, devices that need to really uh, start their journey to deliver more value based on data. But we also, of course, add uh, or deliver this uh, customized IoT projects for our end customers. So customers like, I would say, Bosch, but also a lot of other industrial customers and, and service providers 
which are looking to start with IoT. We do that based on domain These are things which come out box and, and are quickly implementable and uh, the users can actually start getting value with, uh, within days. And, uh, and within these solutions, we are actually not only talking about Bosch on solutions, we also have a lot of partner solutions in our portfolio. And in order to connect this all, thing, all these things and I would say solutions as well, we have the Bosch IoT suite as one of the IoT platforms or our IoT platform, uh, which actually is, actually is there to, to manage all this connection and the device management. Maybe to exemplify a little bit what I'm talking about. So if you see here on the left side, you see a lot of different devices. So you have machines, you have robots, you have um, equipment, tools, you have sensors uh, on different kinds, and all of them are speaking different languages. So they are talking different protocols, they are uh, uh, saying th uh, the same thing in different manners, and uh, they also connect in different ways. So you have of things for example, using a gateway, right? So that you send information initially to a gateway, and then from this gateway, you get it to, to a cloud system, for example. So how do we actually do it? Uh, we have two, um, I would say, IoT platforms. So one of them is the IoT Suite, is a horizontal platform aiming at managing devices, managing data from the field, and making sure that everything is working. So it's, 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 it has a more supportive role for an IoT project, meaning uh, it's there to assure that uh, everything in terms of data which is coming from the field is coming on the most appropriate way. On the other hand, we also have uh, another, I would say, domain-specific IoT platform, which is for the moment called Connected Building Services, which are aiming on um, bringing all this data, this IoT data, into context. And by context, what I mean is uh, putting it into a building relevant context. Exactly that place on the building and so on. So, with, with that in place, we can actually start giving value. So for whom do we actually give value? Um, we have a lot of customers in the commercial building segment. So we are talking about office buildings, shopping malls, a lot of industrial customers. And from the use cases, um, we are talking a lot about air quality management, space monitoring, and also some security relevant use cases. Maybe to give you a, a little bit uh, more insight into our connected building platform, so it's there, as I said before, basically to maximize the synergies between devices, but also the solutions, the use cases itself. And we aim to give our uh, customers and the customers, as you see, can be a facility manager, a site manager, but can also be a visitor or an employee working at the facility. So we aim to give them as much information as they need, uh, but also not, we try to not overwhelm them with too much. So the idea is, all the information that you have, even if that means from solutions that are not only ours from Bosch, but also from other third parties as well. Uh, we also are able to connect and manage basically every type of device. So of course we work uh, very closely to our colleagues from uh, from Bosch Building Technologies with their great cameras but we are also able to integrate sensors and devices from other manufacturers as well. Um, and with that, what we try to um, well deliver at the end is to really um, make out of this building IoT, which is growing, but is still not part of our realities. We want to make it so cost efficient as possible, but also to deliver as much value as possible so that it's, it's it becomes a must um, into every smart building out there. So on the right side, if you see, this is just a glimpse of what are the use cases, what are the solutions that we have in our portfolio as for now. Um, I think uh, the, your imagination would bring you a lot of uh, idea to what uh, these solutions could do to increase the security of your customers, uh, your own uh, security within your own buildings. 
Um, and this is, as I said, just uh, a start of what we can actually do. So with that, I will give you Adrian, the word back so that you can uh, say some final words, maybe. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Rafa, for taking us on such an immersive journey behind the scenes. And I trust it was useful to put all of the details into life examples. Now, um, we do know that a good presentation is only as strong as the message it delivers, right? But presentation slides are stagnant. And when talking about IoT, we really need a, a, a live presentation to see how everything works in real time with real data. And that is why we are inviting all of you um, to a live demonstration of our connected building dashboard. You will see and feel how our presentation will come to life uh, during, the, during the demo. Also, IoT transformation uh, has two main components, right? Uh, technology and the business. That is why we're also ready to discuss openly how an IoT project will look uh, like for your business. We're even ready to share with you how the financials might look like and even calculate the potential um, ROI together. And lastly, we'll be more than happy to explore new use cases and, um, and best practices with you, as Rafa mentioned. After all, we're always excited and um, we're really excited um, and passionate for innovative ideas and uh, strong partners to work with. So um, you can schedule meetings with us through the platform or approach us directly whichever is more comfortable for you. Thank you all for the attention and we're looking forward to some uh, really exciting discussions with you. And once again, thank you.